Let's talk about biomes, which are major classes of vegetation. Where a given biome occurs, it may not always have the same species, but biomes look the same in different parts of the world. And there are perhaps a dozen or maybe a few more biomes. So let's look at where these biomes occur. On this map from our book, each biome is drawn in with a different color. The high mountain regions are shown in black, and on those high mountains you would find both taiga and alpine tundra. The tropical rainforests in the center are the bright green. I realize if you're colorblind, this might not help that much anyway. Tropical deciduous forests have a more brownish green color. Savannas in orange and hot deserts in yellow. Chaparral, which is a Mediterranean type climate, you can see it on the California west coast and around the Mediterranean Sea. Also there's a little bit in Australia. It's purple on this map. Biomes are determined by the combination of mean annual temperature and precipitation. And on this um, graph you can see that things are backwards here. Well, precipitation goes the right way from zero to higher, but temperature is from higher to lower. So you can see the lowest, driest place of all is the tundra, the, the blue upper left part, and the warmest, wettest, the tropical rainforest. So the occurrence of all these other places are somewhere in this mass. The deserts, you can see to the left, very low annual precipitation, sometimes even zero, going from high temperatures to cold temperatures. In this table we can see the major biomes, the dominant growth form of plants that live there, whether angiosperms, flowering plants, or gymnosperms are dominant, and what the temperature and moisture re regimes are like, summarized here. So tropical rainforest, Lots of broad-leaved trees, evergreen, meaning they don't drop their leaves regularly at any particular time of year, mostly angiosperms. Warm temperatures and a lot of moisture. Contrast that with the taiga, needle-leaved evergreen trees, mostly gymnosperms, cold temperature and moderate amounts of moisture. The same biome in different parts of the world means the climatic conditions are the same, but sometimes different plant families are there, different taxonomically, but convergent in what they look like in growth forms. So here we can see an example of that. On the left, a cactus, typical of New World desert plants. On the right, a euphorb in the poinsettia family. Productivity ranges widely throughout the biomes. As you could imagine, warmer, wetter places like the tropical rainforest have high net primary productivity. And this decreases as you go toward the poles and as things get drier. But if we look down at the bottom, you can see, kind of surprising to me, that swamps and marshes, wetlands, are extremely productive, even though their plant cover seems kind of low and not very diverse. So let's look at some biomes. Here's an ice plateau in Antarctica. Not great plant diversity. Here's one of the two vascular plants on Antarctica. The grass is Deschampsia. You can see at the bottom a little bit of moss. There are some interesting animals, however. This is where you might find a lot of penguins. Sub-Antarctic islands have slightly greater plant diversity. Here's some tussock grasses and some interesting birds. Not penguins, but relatives of 
puffins. These, I think, are gannets. There are deserts all over the world where things are dry. Some are hot, some are cold. Here's some desert in Southern California, maybe the Mojave Desert. In general, kind of a gray-brown place with a few bits of green in the cactus. This might be a time when there's been a little rainfall. Some of the shrubs have leaves on them. The tropical dry forest has an intermediate amount of rainfall, but it's highly seasonal. During the wet season, the landscape is green, the trees are covered with leaves. In the dry season, many of the plants drop their leaves, and that's the time when they flower. The tropical rainforest, a warm and wet place with a fairly constant temperature and rainfall regime, is dominated by large, broad-leaved angiosperm um, plants, trees. But here's a cooler place where there are rainforests, the old-growth temperate rainforest that you might find on the Olympic Peninsula, the huge trees with moss-covered, lichen-covered branches, an interesting phenomenon, canopy roots, where they make adventitious roots on their branches to soak up nutrients from the epiphytes on them. And here's some taiga, intermediate in rainfall, kind of dry, dominated by gymnosperm, small trees. Some parts of North America the native vegetation was a big grassland, a prairie, actually grasses, but many interesting, beautiful wildflowers as well. There's not too much of this habitat left because it's a great place to grow crops and much of it was eliminated for farmland. Here's a cold desert in Wyoming. You can see not many tall plants. The biggest plants are sagebrush. And here's a grassland in the Arctic in Alaska. You can see lots of cotton grass and other short plants. Here's a tropical woodland in the dry forest of Tanzania. Lots of large herbivores, consequently many of the plants are spiny and need to protect their branches and leaves from too much grazing, or maybe I should say browsing. Here's a picture of the temperate deciduous forest in Michigan. This is in the middle of the summer where the trees are covered with leaves, but in the winter everything's leafless, covered with snow, and then in the spring as the snow melts all the understory little plants come up from bulbs and it's beautiful spring flowering in May or April and May. And then the trees leaf out and then the understory things are in fruit. Until of course the fall when temperatures get cool and tree leaves turn colors and fall and then winter comes it starts again. In the Everglades, we have some unique habitats. We think they're unique, but they occur also in other parts of the world with different species, like our tree islands in the long hydroperiod wetlands in the Everglades. This area is covered by water much of the year, but dries out so that the tree islands are dry during part of the year. On higher ground in the southeastern U.S., you get hardwood hammocks dominated by oaks and other broadleaf trees. And a very beautiful aromatic habitat is called the chaparral with a lot of sclerophyllous or tough-leaved shrubs and small trees characteristic of the Mediterranean climate shown here in California, but a lot of this around the Mediterranean Sea and in parts of Australia, too. So I'd like you to think about what biomes you like the best. In all the natural places you've been, 
what's your favorite place that you've been and how would you describe it or characterize it? And also let's talk about what you like about it.